Some reptiles are really cheap. I'm talking under a hundred bucks to buy, but you probably shouldn't. And I'm about to tell you which ones and why. My name's Adam, this is Diamond. You're watching Wiccans Wicked Reptiles. Stick around. So I'm not saying you should never buy reptiles under a hundred bucks, because if that were the case, there's a lot of leopard geckos and crested geckos, which make amazing pets that you wouldn't buy. So that's not the point of the video. The point is don't buy reptiles just because they're cheap, especially these five. Starting off with number five, sulcata tortoises. Now, if you're in the US, you're like, aha, yes, of course. I've seen sulcata tortoises for under $100 all over the place. If you're from north, like me in Canada, you're thinking, what the heck is this guy talking about? They're like 600 bucks here. And the thing is in the US, in places like Arizona, for example, they're, they're running around everywhere. They're in shelters like dogs, okay? Here, we have dog shelters. There's lots of dogs that need homes, right? We should give them really great homes. But there are no reptiles like that, like you do see in places like Arizona and Florida and places like that. And the reason that they're so cheap a lot of the places is because they just, first of all, they produce tons and tons of babies. And in the US, there's lots and lots of places where they can just roam free. Arizona, they're roaming around, literally, right? Everyone has one in their backyard, it seems like. Where here in Canada and parts of Europe, you can't. You need a big giant room for these big giant tortoises and they're really not the best for most people. So for that reason, I suggest most people don't get them because they're cheap, of course, because there's way more supply than there is demand. That's how business works, right? But it's really difficult to take care of them and it's really expensive if you don't have an outdoor space. If you do have an outdoor space, well, you're good, you know? If you have a yard that's free of predators and has barriers, you can throw them some hay and stuff like what they eat, right? This isn't a care guide. But if you live in the north, you can't have them outside for at least six months. So for that reason, it takes a heck of a lot more money to house them, takes more money to feed them, heat, lighting, things like that. So just because they're a hundred bucks doesn't mean you should buy them because by the time you're building the enclosure, you're 10 times the price of the actual animal. Number four, I'm talking about basilisks. Okay, so there's several species of basilisk. Basiliska, Basiliscus, Basiliska, I don't know, Matt's gonna put it right here for you. These things grow huge. Look at the size of this one that we found in Costa Rica, okay? They told us, don't put your hands close to it because you could be leaving without part of your hand, all right? These things don't want to hurt you, but they definitely could if they wanted to, and they're not the most tamed down lizards. In fact, most of them that you see in North America, they're wild caught. So they're coming in with parasites, they're coming in cantankerous, they've lived a life in the wild already, and even if you do get a baby, they show up this small, they get this freaking big, okay? And an animal that's this freaking big, you're gonna need a grow tent or big enclosure that you're gonna get from, you know, cages or custom or whoever, who's gonna make these giant enclosures that are, you know, six foot by six foot or whatever, and unfortunately, most people can't afford those because they're not cheap. And even if you go the grow tent route, I mean, then you have obstructions, right? You're not gonna really be able to see into it. What's the point of having it in the first place? I mean, there's a whole bunch of reasons why it's difficult to take care of basilisks. Besides the fact that they're just a giant freaking lizard that grows way too big, it's really fast. These are the Jesus lizards, by the way. You know, the ones that run on their hind legs like Tyrannosaurus, you can run on water because they run so fast. That's what a basilisk is. So I get why you'd want one. I do, they're beautiful. I mean, of all the lizards in the world, these ones look most dinosaur-esque. It looks like these things are gonna sprout wings from their back and then just glide across the Costa Rican jungle and blow fire on everything that, you know, upsets them. But they're not, they're lizards, they're pets that don't really make good pets. And unfortunately, even in my neck of the woods up here in Canada, I've seen basilisks in pet stores for like 40 bucks, 40 bucks for an animal that at bare minimum is gonna cost you three or 400 bucks to set up if you buy everything used. Not a good idea. I'm sure you can clearly see why these animals so far just don't make the best pets and you probably shouldn't buy them even though they're cheap. I can clearly see all the time thanks to today's sponsor, GlassesUSA.com. If you don't already know, GlassesUSA.com is one of the biggest eyewear retailers in the US offering thousands of eyeglasses and sunglasses such as Ray-Ban, Gucci, Oakley, and many more. What I love about GlassesUSA.com is the glasses start at $39 and you can get up to 70% off what most retailers 
$1,000 would cost. Also, these are blue light glasses. Basically, they're blue light blocking lenses, meaning that your computer or your screen puts off a lot of blue light. I look at screens all day long. So these lenses help protect my eyes and you didn't even know there was a special filter on here from just looking at them. Reduced eye strain, no headaches, better sleep. I mean, blue light blocking is the way to go. If you're not sure where to start, they have a quiz on glassesusa.com. You look at your face, the shape, and they help you decide what type of glasses is best for you. The try on feature is also amazing. You can look at your own face and then superimpose the glasses on the website using your cell phone camera. So you can see what the lenses would look like on your face. I absolutely love this feature. It helped me pick the ones that I'm wearing right now. I love my new eyeglasses and not only the eyeglasses, these ones are great. These ones are better in my opinion. They're my favorites. And of course the sunglasses, are amazing also. Overall, just, I think that this company is amazing. GlassesUSA.com makes it easier to shop online. You have great prices and GlassesUSA.com is offering a crazy exclusive discount on top of any coupon code they currently have on the website just for my followers. And it's only available for 24 hours. So click on the link in the top of the description box to get all the details. Once again, thanks Glasses USA for sponsoring today's video. Okay, this one will go broad. Number three, wild caught natives or even not natives. So basically a native is just a native animal to your region. For example, if you live in South Carolina, don't just go get a corn snake for five bucks because someone found it in their backyard. You know what I mean? That's, and I've seen that here on Kijiji and Craigslist, where someone's like, oh, I found this garter, or I have, sorry, they don't say I found, that's what they mean. I have this garter snake and uh, it's five bucks. Interesting, it's gravid and it has a wound on it. Where'd you get it? Oh, well, a friend of mine, no, you didn't. You found it in your backyard and you're trying to make five bucks, you know? So that is what I recommend you don't do because wild caught, first of all, it could be illegal, right? It could be illegal. If you live in say Georgia and you find a corn snake, illegal, don't do that. We shouldn't be giving money to people who are doing something illegal that hurts the environment, okay? I don't recommend unless it is lawful. Unless you have, say, in some places there's hunting licenses where instead of you killing an animal, you can collect an animal or collection licenses, which could be different. But either way, if you're doing that and you have, say, a tag limit or a bag limit, depending where you're from, of five, say, and you can take five out of the wild and it's legal, then whatever, who cares? But if you have these animals or you're getting these animals from the wild and they're poached, they're, it's illegal to take them, they're an endangered species, whatever, not good. On top of that, do you really want an animal that has parasites? The answer is probably no. If you get an animal that's captive bred, generally they're gonna be healthier. So even if it's not native, for example, now I personally have just brought in a bunch of dune geckos or elegant sandfinger geckos or whatever you want to call them, but they're not native to here. Obviously they're from the Middle East, but they are wild caught, which means when they're brought in, you still have to treat them for worms and things like that. But there are none that are captive bred here. So people like myself and Daffy's reptiles and reptiliatus are going to have to bring them in, treat them and then breed them so that we can sell the offspring because they're amazing pets. But unfortunately, they do come in with issues. So we have to make sure we take care of the issues first and then we breed them. So in general, I don't recommend wild caught stuff for most people. If you've been doing this forever, you know what you're doing. You have access to ivermectin and other drugs that you need. Obviously go to a vet. Don't just, oh, you said ivermectin. That's the stuff like, no, don't do that. Then it's different. But if you're someone who's maybe a novice or getting into reptiles, stay away from wild caught stuff. Trust me, it'll be worth it in the long run. Number two, we're talking about iguanas and we're talking about green iguanas like my boy Doug here. So the reason I have Doug is because, well, I'm in a different position where it was um, bestowed upon me, Doug was. So if you're looking for an animal, right? I never wanted a green iguana. I got one because just happenstance. I'm the reptile guy around here. I have a zookeeper who had the, the was Doug when she worked at the other reptile store, the whole thing, right? So it's a different scenario. If I was just a regular guy who didn't have staff to help me and just had a collection for the sake of having a collection and didn't make a living talking about it, I would not have a green iguana, okay? Green iguanas need big enclosures. These are five foot animals a lot of the times. Males go through a puberty. They become very cantankerous. Even if they're placid, they're still big and they're gonna eat you at a house and home. They eat tons and tons of leafy greens and berries and things like that. Do a, I mean, I could do a care guide if you want. Do you want me to do a care guide on green iguanas? I could, let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, appreciate you. Either way, there's better options. If you really want a big iguana, I mean, rock iguanas are better. If you're in Canada or Europe, get a Fiji banded iguana. 
yeah, the frog recommends it also. Just in general, green iguana is a semi-arboreal or some will say fully arboreal lizard that is big and will tail whip you and sometimes bite you and they have no problem running at you with an open mouth if they get upset. And even if they're tamed down, sometimes they get upset and then they act upset and they're big, too big to be doing that. It's just not really a good idea for most people. So I think green iguanas are probably on the top five worst beginner reptiles ever. I mean, of the common reptiles you can get. And these things in pet stores are 10 or 15 bucks a lot of the times at expos rather. Uh, yeah, I don't recommend green iguanas. Even though they're cheap, it's gonna cost you a ton to maintain. It's gonna cost you a ton to build them an enclosure. Even if you're outside, even if you're in a place like, I don't know, I don't, I don't, are they legal in Florida anymore? I don't know. If you're in a place where the weather is conducive, conductive, Whatever, I'm not smart enough to make these videos, especially at, why is it, why are we doing this so late at night? Either way, don't get a green iguana. It's gonna cost too much money. It's gonna be big. It's not gonna be what you think it is. Just because they're cute like this, they're not as cute when they're like that. Well, Doug is pretty cute still. Anyway, let's move on to number one. Number one, readier sliders. Let me tell you about readier sliders, okay? Basically everywhere in the world I've ever been, I've been all over the place, I've seen readier sliders. Every single place. Here, where I live, they're not native. Thailand, not native. Indonesia, not native. Madagascar, not native. I've seen them everywhere. These freaking things are taking over the world because people get them as pets or whatever, food items in some places of the world, and then they release them because they get a little tiny turtle that's this big and then it turns into a 10 or 12 inch turtle and they can't take care of them anymore because they realize how bad their turtle water stinks because they're not putting the tons and tons of money that it's takes to put a pro proper filtration and enough water so therefore it gets annoying becomes a nuisance and they just oh here you go little buddy be free he'll like it anyway sure but you know who's not gonna like it all the fish the amphibians everything that they're gonna eat they're not gonna like that promise you never mind the fact they can hybridize with native things so now your native populations are getting diluted so these are not good for the ecosystem basically anywhere and it's to the point where, I mean, there's rescues out there, but rescues have so many of these freaking turtles. So many, there's too many. They breed like crazy. They can live all over the world. Radio sliders are not the best. I mean, get a musk turtle. Get something else that is smaller that you can take care of. Now, if you're the one person who's like, I love radio sliders. I don't care if it's a $5 or free dollars turtle. They're free dollars everywhere you go. Free, completely free. People are getting rid of them like you wouldn't believe. That's different. But if you're like, oh, I want a turtle. No. Don't. Do you have room for 150 gallons? Do you have enough money for the biggest filter that money can buy? Plus a basking area, plus a mercury vapor bulb and or a basking bulb and linear UVB? Do you have, you probably don't. And even if you did, I mean, why are you choosing the $5 turtle then? I mean, isn't there cooler turtles that you'd rather have? Probably, right? I just think that people buy them because they're cheap or free. And it's not a good idea. My turtles are free. I have a yellow belly slider. The difference is, I put in over $1,000 to create this setup for them. So yeah, different. Don't do this. Don't think it's a good idea. Let me know in the comment section what you think the free or cheap animals that you shouldn't have as most pet keepers. Please let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like and subscribe button. As always, really appreciate it. And as always, thanks to the Patreon supporters. Thank you guys so much. You guys get merch, discounts, you get a whole bunch of that and one-on-ones. I got a couple of those tomorrow morning. All of that for as little as $1 and that's it. So do videos twice a week. That means I'll see you in the next one.